Welcome to today's webinar, Powered by Propane, brought to you by LP Gas and our sponsor, Roush Cleantech. I'm Diane Safranik from North Coast Media, publisher of LP Gas Magazine, and I will be your event manager. Before we get started, I want to let you know that today's webinar will be recorded. You are currently in a listen-only mode. The recording will be available one day from today on our website, lpgasmagazine.com slash webinars. A link to the on-demand recording will also be emailed to you when it is available. At this time, I'd like to acquaint you with the ways in which you can participate during today's presentation. Please notice in the lower left-hand corner of your console that there is a Submit button. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation. Just type in the text box at the bottom left, then click Submit to place your question in queue. Questions that were submitted during registration may be covered in this webinar. Some questions may also be answered in an upcoming issue of LP Gas Magazine or in one of our monthly e-newsletters, Blue Flame Pilot. We strive to answer as many of your questions as possible. Finally, if you experience any technical difficulties, during today's event, select Help to submit your issue, and Assistant Producer Bethany Chambers or I will personally assist you. Now I'd like to turn today's event over to our moderator, LP Gas Editor, Brian Richardson. Thanks, Diane. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Powered by Propane webinar. We're glad you could join us today for a discussion on propane autogas, which has become a hot topic in the propane industry. It seems every day we're reading how companies, municipalities, and school districts are adopting propane autogas into their fleets. Education is a key component to capitalizing on this growing market segment, and our speaker today can provide just that. Todd Mao is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Roush Clean Tech, which is based in Livonia, Michigan. Todd drives Roush Clean Tech's national business development team and travels the country speaking about domestic alternative fuel technologies and their impact on the economy and environment. Todd is here today to help you learn more about propane autogas and how to incorporate it into your fleet. With that, I'd like to introduce Todd Mao. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate the introduction. You almost sound like my agent. Uh, next <laughs> slide, please. Welcome, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to speak to you. I think as of last count, we almost have 100 registered for today's webinar, so exciting to see the interest level not only in Roush but uh, also in propane autogas, as Brian mentioned earlier. Uh, we're going to go through a couple different segments of the presentation today, a little bit of a background on who Roush is, who Roush Cleantech My Division is, products developed specifically for our friends on the phone here from the propane industry, and then also talk about the opportunity for this audience to um, achieve and recognize some new gallons outside of traditional sources of home heating and other commercial applications. So we'll talk about that and then wrap it up with some, some questions and answers. So if you would, next slide, please. So a little bit about Roush Enterprises. Uh, many folks are familiar with the name. They may see Jack Roush in our race teams on, on NASCAR tracks on Sunday. Uh, they may have driven a hot rod Mustang. It's interesting uh, when we go around the country and talk to folks about the depth and breadth of capability of the organization, most people are kind of blown away once we, we have given the presentation. But just in a nutshell, Roush is a company, uh, Roush Enterprises is a holding company with a variety of divisions underneath it that I'll go through here in a couple seconds with more than 4,000 employees. Now, I talked about some of the fun stuff related to NASCAR racing and hot rod Mustangs. But ultimately, really, the, the DNA and the, the, the tie that binds for us is engineering and powertrain development. Uh, we've been Ford's chief and chief partner from a powertrain development and engineering standpoint since the mid-1970s, and we branched off and do support for several other OEMs uh, in the automotive industry. Within that, we also have Roush Fenway Racing, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we've been Ford's dominant NASCAR Sprint Cup racing team for several decades. Uh, Roush Performance, which is uh, another fun part of our business that does the hot rod Mustangs and Raptors. And then my division, which was formed in 2010, uh, that we'll talk about more in detail here today, with a focus on developing propane autogas systems for Ford commercial trucks uh, and school buses. Next slide, please. Before I go too much further, I also wanted to thank our partners on the phone from, from PERC as well as from the industry. Uh, we started uh, in, this, uh, in this initiative related to propane autogas back in 2006. 
Perk actually approached Roush um, and said, hey, can you guys help us develop an F-150 that ran on propane? Until that point, we didn't recognize necessarily the opportunity that, that was there in this industry, in this country, and worldwide in regards to the acceptance of propane. So I wanted to thank Perk for the development dollars to help develop product and the ability to market and promote what we're doing as well as the marketers that are on the phone today. So a little bit more about Roush, again, the, from a depth perspective, we're, we're unique in the alternative fuel space in regards to this wheel of capability. And you'll hear Jack Roush, our, our founder and our chairman and our CEO, Evan Lyle, mention that we like to leverage the core of capability. And why that's important, obviously, um, you know, we, we prefer to keep um, jobs and services in-house versus outsourcing them. But w what's most important is cost timing and quality of the product we develop. When we can control those different resources under one roof, everything from uh, concept design and styling to body engineering to chassis engineering, powertrain, electrical, NVH, writing the technical communications, testing, et cetera, all the way through sales, distribution, and field support, ultimately our end customer, these folks on the phone, as well as folks outside the propane industry, we feel get a better experience. So it's a significant investment from a corporate perspective in test equipment and PhDs and brick and mortar. So um, again, from a corporate perspective, committed to long-term growth, diversity, and being here to support our customers and the industry for many years to come. Next slide, please. A little bit more about uh, Roush Cleantech. So as I mentioned, um, we were formed in 2010, my division, with a focus on uh, propane auto gas solutions for Ford trucks, vans, cutaways, and school buses. Uh, one of the things we noticed in this industry that had kind of um, short-circuited the sales efforts was um, technology, supply chain, service support, um, marketing message, brand. And so when we kind of, uh, when we met with Perk and Perk kind of made us aware of the opportunity to um, develop and promote and market a propane auto gas solution, we wanted to see how could we leverage what we already had from an asset perspective as a company, Roush Enterprises, and put it behind this effort. And since 2010, we've invested about $35 million of Jack's money, and we've received additional funds from the propane industry, as I mentioned. Thank you very much. Um, to really develop the core, the foundation that will help us grow for years to come, as well as drive gallons to, to the folks that are on the phone today on this webinar. So everything from the brand, as I mentioned, folks are very familiar with who Roush is. Um, we're on uh, Generation 3 of our, of our propane technology today, working on Generation 4. Uh, certification with uh, EPA and CARB, the engineering piece of it. Supply chain was a, a real weak point uh, when we got involved in this business. The automotive standards that, that uh, Ford, folks like Ford or GM or Chrysler require in their product, um, those standards weren't and those practices weren't in place in that supply chain. So we spent a lot of time, effort, and money helping that supply chain come up to speed to, to meet the automotive standards and also scale to the volumes that we see are coming that we'll talk about. Um, also, the, the, another piece is, is field service. We saw that really lacking in the industry and have spent a lot of time and effort, and we'll go into more detail in this presentation. Next slide, please. So from a, a focus perspective, um, when we started this effort, we wanted to, to see how do we draw interest and awareness to the benefits of propane auto gas. The folks that are on the phone obviously know the benefits. It's domestic, it's clean, it's lower cost, um, all the benefits that, that are there. But the folks um, outside of this, this webinar in our industry weren't necessarily aware of the power of, of propane auto gas. So our focus initially was really going after the Fortune 500 fleets, getting them to adopt our product and our fuel collection so that they can then start to tell the message about how successful the uh, propane auto gas integration into their fleet. So just a few brands to name here from Sears to Dish Network to DHL, DirecTV, FedEx, and the list goes on. If you go to our website, we've got a, a several testimonials from these folks. And again, we found it to be very successful from a peer-to-peer -peer perspective to be able to tell the story. Uh, not that I'm not a believable sales guy or my team's not believable, but when a, a fleet manager or a fleet director or a CFO can tell another CFO at a fleet how successful propane auto gas has been, we find the adoption rate to happen much faster. Next slide, please. So within the industry, and, and again, we want to just recognize a couple of the folks that have, have been there to support us, 
not only from uh, infrastructure perspective, but also for, from buying our products. Um, it's funny, we, we've, we've found it to be the most difficult adoption within the industry. It's been easier to get folks like Frito-Lay and, and FedEx and DISH to adopt propane than it is isn't necessarily our own industry. So um, it, there's a variety of reasons which we'll go into in the presentation, but uh, again, wanted to, to thank folks like Amerigas and Anthem and Ferrogas and Blossman um, and Camps Propane and Superior for being involved not only on the infrastructure side and helping support our customers, but also uh, adopting our product. And again, that's just to name a few. There's, there's many others. Next slide, please. So uh, we always like to remind ourselves, um, we, we work for Jack Roush, and if you can imagine, Jack's a very competitive man, and ultimately um, every Sunday uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, at the racetrack, you're being measured in regards to how you're doing. So uh, much like they do at Roush Fenway, keeping track of, of where they are in the points race, we like to keep track of our success or failures here at Roush Cleantech. And uh, again, we also like to be able to provide that input back to our partners in the industry. Are we doing a good job for you? So. Since 2007, we've sold a little over 8,000 vehicles, and the majority of those have really been since 2012. And over the course of the life cycle of those vehicles, uh, they'll consume almost 300 million gallons of propane. So um, our goal is obviously to create awareness for the industry, but also uh, the industry is invested in Roush Clean Tech. How can we pay back that investment by driving new gallons to the industry? And we've been successful thus far, and we see that really proliferating here in the, in the coming 24 to 36 months. Next slide, please. So now comes the fun part. We're going to talk about products. Um, and as I mentioned uh, at the start, we're going to kind of divide this into two categories. When we first uh, got involved with the industry, Perk, um, I remember Brian Fian and, and Roy Willis said, look, we really need you guys to develop product that, that meets the needs of our industry, uh, whether that's tank setting trucks or managers trucks or bobtails. So we're going to divide it into, we're going to talk about products specific to, uh, to the propane industry, and then we'll talk about, again, the opportunities in products and vertical channels that we can collaborate with to, uh, to go drive new gallon sales. So the first that we would talk about today, if you go to the next slide, please, Diane, is uh, the Bobtail uh, product as well as it, it fits into other niches as well that we'll talk about, but it's the Ford F650 chassis cab, um, model years 2013 through 2015. Uh, it's got the 6.8 liter V10 three valve engine You'll notice from an application perspective, we cover all cab configurations, all wheelbase configurations, and it comes with a commercial six-speed automatic transmission, which we'll, we'll go into more detail here in a second. Uh, we've developed a couple different fuel tank offerings for this vehicle. One uh, that you notice at the, the, the top picture, which is we, what we call a clean CA, that offers 45 usable gallons, and that's where the tanks don't go beyond the back of the cab. And then the one below, a non-clean CA, where we can offer more capacity to our customers uh, and extend the tanks beyond the back of the cab. You'll notice that there's two tanks. You only have to fill the tank on the driver's side, and it automatically fills to the tank on the passenger side. And all the gauges uh, on the vehicle work as they would with, with gasoline or diesel. So, again, from a, from a user perspective, very user-friendly, only have to fill on one side. This vehicle is EPA and CARB approved, and uh, today the gross vehicle weight rating of this is up to 30,000 pounds. We'll talk about the F750 that's coming uh, first part of next year that will get us up to 33,000 GVW uh, shortly. Uh, from a pricing perspective, uh, we've got uh, the, the short tanks, clean CA, uh, 21,900, that's parts and labor installed, and then the longer tanks, uh, a few dollars more at $22,500. $22, uh, a few details, because we get these questions all the time from folks inside and outside the industry. Tell me about usable capacity. Tell me about dimensions and how it integrates in with my body. So I'm not going to go through the gory details of this slide, but the dimensions of the tanks and the dry weight of, of the fuel system, that's both tanks on there. We do get the question a lot, but it seems like you guys are adding a lot of weight to the vehicle. Um, this typically comes from outside the industry because they're steel tanks. But as, as you guys know, propane weighs... 2.2 pounds per gallon less than, than gasoline and a little bit less than diesel. So when you look at fully loaded gasoline to propane to diesel, uh, our collective solution is very competitive in the industry from a, from a payload perspective. Next slide, please. You can actually flip one more if you don't mind, Diane. So 
So the next uh, slide talks about the long tanks, the non-clean CA. This is uh, 83 usable gallons of capacity, and again, it goes into details related to links um, and, and dry weight of the fuel system. An important point to note here, you see special considerations. Uh, one of the benefits of working with a company like Roush in our integration into Ford is we've got what we call a VSO option, and that's a vehicle special order option that can be ordered through your Ford dealer. And uh, ultimately what that does, it pre-punches the holes in the frame when Ford builds the chassis uh, where we mount our fuel tanks. So it makes it easier from an installation process and time and cost to, to, to order the VSO option, have the frame pre-punched uh, for the uh, fuel system tanks to be installed. Again, if, even if you don't order the VSO option, we can still have the frame uh, punched so you can install the, uh, the tanks. But again, the integration with Ford and their plants to be able to offer an option like that for our technology just makes it a, a more seamless experience for our end user. Uh, today on uh, the F650, we've got a ship-through system set up with a company called Manning Truck Equipment. They're based in San Antonio. This truck is currently built in Mexico. So as uh, your Ford dealer orders this truck and it comes across the border, it can go to Manning Truck Equipment in San Antonio where they would install our fuel system and then would go on to wherever you would, guys would want it to go for whatever application, whether it's a, a bobtail, um, cylinder exchange, uh, tank setting truck. So again, we've made it very seamless for the end user. Truck being built in Mexico goes to a approved upfitter manning truck equipment and then on to where you needed to go from there. Next slide, please. So one of the things we've, we've heard and, and great feedback from the industry is, is Todd and Roush, we like the, the capacity you're giving us on the uh, two tank systems that I just referenced in the couple slides uh, prior. But uh, obviously if we're using it as a bobtail, we've got plenty of fuel on board and, and we can wet hose ourselves. So is there a lower cost single tank option? And the answer is yes. We are working on that and that will launch with the new F650-750 um, that will be built in Ohio starting next year and that single tank will offer roughly 50 usable gallons of capacity and be mounted on the driver's side. So again, we're, we're listening to the industry and, and directionally that cost will be about $7,000 less, uh, roughly 15 nine installed parts and labor. So uh, again, we're, we're listening to the feedback from the industry to make our, our product better. Next slide, please. Perfect segue, so um, the industry, and it, we, we've heard it loud and clear from, from many of the folks on the phone and from Perk, that uh, we need a 33,000 GVW truck. Uh, Ford had heard it, so in March of this year at the National Truck and Equipment Show in Indianapolis, Ford unveiled their new F650-750 medium-duty truck uh, that will be built in Ohio at the Ohio Assembly Plant, uh, just outside of Cleveland where they build the cutaway. Uh, so that production will start uh, end of Q1, early Q2 next year. And that truck will deliver what the industry has been asking for, which is an F750 that will have 33,000 GVW and 37,000 pounds of GCWR. Uh, a little bit of, of uh, information on that chassis that's coming, and it's uh, publicly available through Ford site and through their dealers. Um, it will come with hydraulic brakes that are typically for class one through seven trucks. We get a lot of questions about, uh, will you have air? The answer is no, just hydraulic from, from Ford. Um, uh, but uh, from a perspective of what the industry is used to, we understand that you, you prefer air, but we've got lots of users that are using hyd hydraulic brakes, and we've got a lot of data re related to cost and quality and uh, cost to maintain that uh, hydraulic makes a lot of sense compared to air. So same quality as air brakes. They're less expensive than air brakes, and they're less moving parts than air brakes. So again, Ford offering uh, hydraulic brakes on this chassis, um, and from a safety standpoint, uh, they've gone through all the testing, such as passing the, de the Death Valley test uh, from a heat perspective, and they passed it with, with glowing reviews. We've got other customers outside the industry, such as Asplund, uh, the, the tree service company that are using hyd hydraulic brakes on a similar chassis. So again, the, these brakes will, will more than pass the mustard for this industry. Uh, a little bit more detail, these are the, the latest in technology and brakes with the Meritor 4-pot brake system. A little bit about the transmission. It's a six-speed transmission. Again, we get the question, everybody's used to an Allison transmission. How capable is this transmission? What about durability? Uh, this transmission is capable of inputs up to 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. And it's the same transmission in the diesel engine that um, the diesel offers 860 foot-pounds of torque. So uh, we're, we're under 500 foot-pounds of torque on the gasoline propane version. So from a, from a durability perspective and how much we're stressing, stressing that transmission, 
more than capable of, of handling what we need to do from an industry perspective. Next slide, please. Just a couple of pictures of, of some customers that have already adopted the existing F650. Uh, you see we've got a company called Columbus Butane, uh, with a picture on the left with a, with a bobtail. And then we've got a flatbed application with an F550 on the right that uh, ultimately will be set up for a, a tank setting truck. Um, so just a, a couple of snapshots of, of our product already in use within the industry. Next slide, please. Perfect segue, uh, this, the, the next product we'll talk about today is the F450 550 chassis cab. Uh, again, model years 2012 through 2015. It's the same 6.8 liter V10 three valve engine that we talked about in the F650. Uh, we handle all cab configurations, all wheel base configurations, and that comes with a five speed transmission. Today we offer an aft cab tank that sits behind the back of the cab where you'd extend your CA 24 inches. Um, and then put your typical application, whether it's tank setting a service body on behind it. Um, and that's been pretty popular. Folks like Amerigas have ordered quite a few of those. Um, we also offer, and this is more for uh, commercial bus applications, a 65 usable gallon tank that goes aft axle. You have to have about 84 inch inches of overhang aft axle uh, in order to accommodate that tank. So typically for the propane industry, that second tank option does not work. And uh, today we offer the 52 usable gallon capacity tank that sits behind the cab. Uh, and again, just for purposes of, of uh, capability of this truck, this is the 19,500 GVW F550. Everything we do, it's EPA and CARB certified. And then you, you see below, it requires the 98G gaseous fuels prep package. I didn't mention that on the previous product and should have. So, so Ford, um, a lot of people ask the question, if I digress for a second, why doesn't Ford do this in the plant, whether it's propane or natural gas? The volumes just aren't great enough yet for Ford to integrate this into their plant. It would, it would throw their efficiencies way out of whack. So they have a what they called QVM program, a Qualified Vehicle Modifier Program, where they approve companies to do the calibration and system development like Roush um, that maintains their warranty. And uh, the way they support that is with the developers like Roush, and then they equip the engines with what they call a gaseous prep package, hardened valves and seats that deal with the, uh, the lower lubricity of, of both propane and natural gas. So you want to make sure when you're talking to your dealer that you ordered that 98G gas prep package. It's about a $300 option through your dealer. Next slide, please. So this goes into a little bit more detail on that aft cab tank that I just mentioned. Uh, again, just like the F650, it talks about usable capacity, length, width, and height dimensions, dry weight. And it also talks about special considerations for clearance behind the cab between back of the cab, the tank, and then whatever application you put on behind it. Next slide, please. Again, much like um, with the F650, where we're listening to the feedback of the customers, um, we've been told they, that we love the F550, we love to run it on propane, but we can't put the tank behind the cab. Can you guys come up with a saddle tank mount option? And we are working on one. We'll open the order banks this month for delivery beginning in February of next year. You'll see uh, it sits on the driver's side, 50 usable gallons. Um, if you go to the next slide, please, Diane. It goes in a little bit more detail on that tank. Again, usable capacity length, width, height, dry weight. And we're launching it on the longer uh, CA, so available only on the 120-inch CA uh, F550 to start. And then down the road, we are looking to support uh, 84 and 108-inch CA trucks with a dual saddle mount tank. That, that will probably be a, a 12 to 18 months down the road. Next slide, please. Our next truck we'll talk about for the industry is the uh, a manager or service truck, which is the, an F-250 or F-350 pickup truck. Again, um, 2012 and newer model years up through current production, which is 2015. That's powered by the 6.2 liter V8. Uh, it's uh, application-wise 4x2 or 4x4 and uh, different bed links as well as a bed delete application. We offer two different fuel tank capacities. One, as you see, the top picture, that's an in-bed tank that offers 38 usable gallons. And then for customers, we get a lot of questions from uh, government agencies and municipalities that don't need the range, and that's why we offer that midship tank that sits uh, in the same spot as the gasoline tank we remove. 
that's 21 usable gallons. Again, everything EP and CARB certified, and then pricing for both options includes parts and labor below. Next slide, please. A little bit more details is in previous products, we just talked about the, uh, the capacities of the tank and dimensions. This is the underbed, what we call the midship tank. Same package space as the uh, gasoline tank we remove. It's set up for eight foot bed only just due to the length of the tank and does not work on chassis cabs. So you want to order bed delete applications uh, if you want to go with the uh, midship tank uh, just because the chassis cab has a narrower frame rail and we wouldn't be able to package a big enough tank to give you enough range. So that's why we, we only focus uh, that underbody tank um, on bed delete applications or regular pickup truck applications. Next slide, please. This is a little bit more detail about that embed tank that I mentioned before, 38 usable gallons, and then the, the gory details on length, width, height, and dry weight. Um, today we're set up where that tank can be installed with an app height service body. It's available on pickup, bed delete, and chassis cab. So uh, the previous tank, the midship, does not work on chassis cab, but, but this tank would for, uh, for service body applications. Brian, I'm just wondering, do we, uh, before I transition into the next uh, phase of our presentation related to the opportunity for the industry and other products, do we have any relevant questions that, that, that I can answer before I move on? Actually, Ty, we do have a couple here. Um, you know, you're talking about uh, products for inside and outside the propane industry, but outside the propane industry, one question is um, what type of customer or vehicle, um, whether it's delivery, service industry, schools, do you feel is gaining momentum? You know, great question, Brian, and we'll go into a little bit more detail as we move forward, but um, we, we've got our sales team segmented by channel. So we've got six sales folks throughout the country that are calling on government and school bus customers with our partner Bluebird. And then we've got on our private side folks pointed at specific vertical markets such as baking or beverage or logistics, linen, um, transit. So I, to me, um, we focused on the markets where our solution, not only from our product but also hub and spoke where our, our partners could put in private infrastructure, um, where our solution really works for all of those. Um, and we're seeing success in all of them. Specifically, I would say school bus is one. Uh, last year, we were 10% of the market um, with, in Type C with a propane school bus. We sold about 2,000 units with Bluebird. So we're seeing significant adoption in that space. And, and we'll go into more detail in the presentation when I get to that. Uh, obviously, uh, logistics folks, we've seen the, pre, the, uh, the press release on, on UPS and FedEx and folks like that. So th that space is taking off. Again, start and stop, hub and spoke, they're burning a bunch of fuel. Propane makes a lot of sense there. So, um, And then the other one would be transit, and that's specific to paratransit operations, uh, typically on a cutaway like an E450 chassis where, again, hub and spoke, they're burning a bunch of fuel. Uh, they're transporting you know, patients in wheelchairs. Uh, buses have wheelchair lifts. Uh, a perfect solution where we're seeing, you know, hundreds per year being purchased throughout the country and a nice nice opportunity for the industry because those those folks burn a lot of gallons of fuel. Okay, and then just shifting to inside the propane industry, um, one question here is, um, in terms of growing propane marketer sales, how much does a marketer gain in customer perception by running his fleet on propane? Um, you know, what are you hearing from your propane marketer customers? You know, it's interesting. I, um, and it, the first meeting I went to with uh, with Pepsi, uh, where we were trying to convince Pepsi slash Frito Lay it made sense to to put propane in their fleet. They used to run propane in their fleet a long time ago. Um, I remember them asking the propane marketer, "Are you guys running this technology?" Um, and uh, you know, if, if the answer is no, I'm running diesel or gasoline, it, it does tend to send the message of, "Well, if you guys don't believe in the technology, why should I?" So. Um, it's a little bit of the chicken and egg. I know the, the industry that we're talking to here today has been burned with, you know, technology that wasn't robust enough and a service network, service network that was not there or robust enough to support their needs. But we, we in the industry put a lot of time effort to, to address those. So I think now is the time. Um, adopt the product, uh, work with our sales teams to go out and promote the solution outside the industry, and you reap the benefits of lower cost of operation internally and selling more gallons outside your typical sales channel. So it, I think you kind of win on both sides. So if, if you want, we'll go on to the next slide. 
and this is that transition, the opportunity where, where we want to talk to the folks on the phone about, again, we want you to adopt our product and promote it within your own fleet because we think it makes dollars and cents for, for you and your shareholders. But then also, um, again, partnering with the propane marketers to go out and take the message to the fleets we were just talking about, the transit agencies, school districts, uh, the folks like FedEx and UPS and DHL, the baking companies, the linen companies, because those folks all burn a ton of fuel and are looking for an option other than gasoline or diesel, and we're in the sweet spot that can deliver that, both from our perspective and from yours. So next slide, please. So the, the first product that I just want to make you aware of is, is um, a step van, uh, the F53 and F59 uh, strip chassis. Uh, 2013 and newer model years up to current production, which is 2015. Again, common theme, this is the 6.8 liter V10 three valve engine. Um, it won't go through a, a ton of detail here, but uh, on the F53 chassis, we've sold quite a few of these into uh, trolley applications in municipalities. Um, and F59 is a perfect fit for baking, for linen, for, again, folks like uh, UPS, FedEx, DHL, delivery companies, and even some of the beverage companies are starting to look at this chassis as well. So uh, we're seeing significant success. This chassis is built in Detroit, not far from where we are at Roush. Um, today we offer a, a tank package that you see in this picture that's after rear axle, 65 usable gallons. And then next year we'll transition to uh, a tank that sits uh, uh, outside frame rail, which will be 40 usable gallons, uh, located on the driver's side. To go to the next slide, please, Diane. Again, uh, sorry to bore you with the details, but I, again, we want to arm you guys with the information because your customers and prospects will ask you, and our sales team will be there to support you. But the details on usable capacity, length, width, weight, and then any special considerations related to uh, to where that tank package is. But again, um, folks like Aramark, folks like Ameripride, folks like Cintas, UPS, FedEx, these are all targets um, for, for this, and linen companies, local linen companies, all targets for this type of chassis. Again, hub and spoke, they burn a ton of fuel, a huge opportunity for us at Roush and for uh, us as the propane industry. Next slide, please. Todd, we do have a, a question come in here. Um, sure. Where are the service, center, service centers for the trucks for a lot of these products that you're talking about here? Yeah, great question. You know, as I mentioned in our foundation, the, the, one of the things that we saw early on that there was just a lack of a, a proper service network out there, not only for us when we first started, but just as an industry in general, propane, CNG, electric hybrids, you name it. And so um, today we have over 400 service locations um, that are trained and have the proper tools uh, and training to, uh, to support these vehicles once you deploy them. I, I would say that, um, you know, obviously I think sometimes the perception is that I could just drive it into a Ford dealer and they should be able to fix it. We're not quite there yet um, just because the volume's not there. I mean, obviously Ford is endorsing it, promoting it, pushing alternative fuels. But my recommendation would be as our sales team is working with you on deployment, you tell us how you'd like to have service done. So if you go to Todd Mao Ford or Brian Richardson Ford, we'll train them how to service your product. Or if you do it in-house, we can train you. Or um, if you use an independent third party, we can train those folks as well. We want to make that transition as seamless as possible. So the service network is growing significantly, Brian, and we're listening to the customer on where to go versus trying to force them to go somewhere they're not comfortable with. Perfect. Uh, I appreciate that uh, Diane setting up the next slide for me. So the, the next product is the E450 cutaway and strip chassis. Um, uh, this is uh, 2012 and newer model year up through current production, which is 2015. This is a variant of the, the 6.8 V10. This is the two valve, not the three valve, so one less exhaust valve, a little less power and torque than its three valve brother. Um, we support all the different applications in wheelbase. This has a five speed transmission. Uh, today we offer a 41 usable gallon fuel tank that packages in the same location as the gasoline tank we removed. So you can see that in the picture. Um, we are working on an extended range tank uh, that will be available later next year, more for transit applications. Again, everything EP and CARB certified, and this is a, a chassis that goes up to 14.5 GVWR. You see that this also requires a 91G gaseous fuels prep package. So on the, on the F-Series trucks, it was 98G. This is 91G. Your Ford dealer should be familiar with that. And if they're not, just make sure our, our sales team's involved, that we can help guide the dealer through the process. And today that MSRP 
installed parts and labor uh, and markup is 15.9. Um, you see on the right, I've got a, a, a tab called Altoona Tested. As I mentioned, one of the, when Brian asked the question about what are the emerging markets, one of them uh, for this chassis is the uh, is the transit market. So. Uh, today, um, you'll see the, the fixed route transit buses that operate in your town, or you also see uh, cutaway chassis, whether it's a GM or Ford, that are, are um, moving passengers around, whether it's from their home to a doctor appointment, from their home to a job. Um, th they're providing transportation for those that don't have the capability to be transported, and they call this paratransit operations. Um, there are typically in your town, there are buses that are running, as an example, Cleveland. Cleveland Regional Transit Authority is a great example. They've got 40-foot fixed route buses, and then they've got paratransit buses that run on the E450 chassis. They've got well over 100 of those buses that all they do is run all day long, moving people from point A to point B. Uh, they all burn a ton of fuel, typically five to six to 7,000 gallons of fuel per year. And they're getting their funding from the FTA, Federal Transportation Authority. And we've gone through uh, what they call Altoona testing, where our chassis with our fuel system has gone through the Altoona test. That means that our customers and potentially your customers can qualify for up to 85% funding from the FTA for that entire bus. Not only our fuel system for that entire bus. So as an example, an entire bus with the chassis, the body, and our fuel system, maybe $80,000, that customer would only pay for 15% of that bus. And then they reap the advantages of what we can sell them as an industry with the cleaner, domestic, lower-cost fuel source. So we're seeing significant adoption in, in this uh, market. We've got a person that's focused uh, on the transit market that, that came from the industry with 20 years' experience. So someone that uh, can work with you as a propane marketer to go explore uh, that opportunity in your market. This also, the E450 comes in a, a strip chassis, and again, from a baking perspective, this is a, a chassis of choice uh, from a step van. Um, folks like Alpha Baking in Chicago and some of the bigger bakeries are using this chassis to, again, hub and spoke, take baked goods from one location to their distributors. Uh, they're coming back to a central spot. They're burning a ton of fuel. Again, propane in our solution is a perfect choice. Next slide, please. So just a little bit more detail on that tank. I uh, won't go into gory detail, but it's there for, for future reference, and our sales team can support you. Next slide, please. Our product uh, is, is uh, many of you may have noticed that we didn't have an E-Series of a van or a wagon listed in our product uh, because Ford has discontinued that product, and they brought the new Ford full-size Transit into production in Kansas City. Uh, we are working in development of that product uh, for launch late in 2016. Uh, more details to come, but that, that product is in development. Next slide, please. I think we're going, we're going backwards here, but the, the next opportunity um, is in the school bus market. Uh, and I've got a, a Bluebird Type C product, and I don't know if we're having technical difficulty from a slide perspective, which, which you're seeing, folks, but um, we have the, the Bluebird School Bus product, uh, Type C School Bus, uh, that's 33,000-pound uh, GVWR. Uh, sorry to, um, to, to continue to beat home the, the, the engine here. This is the 6.8 V10 three-valve engine that, that went in the F450, 550, 650, 750, F53, and 59. So that's a significant advantage we and Ford and now Bluebird have is that we're putting a production engine that Ford produces more than 100,000 of a year uh, into a school bus. So we did mention that the huge opportunity that sold more than 2,000 school buses last year. I was just down in Mobile, Alabama for a press conference. We're seeing adoption all over the country from a school bus perspective. They're running older diesels that are dirty. They're worried about emissions and health for their children. Obviously worried about cost, as you guys have seen, as the tax base has gone down. And the, the beauty for us as an industry, we can step in and, and supply a product, uh, both on the chassis side and the fuel side, that, uh, that will deliver the goods. I, my suggestion to the industry is many of you, and, and we have such an advantage over natural gas here, is uh, it, you live in a community that uh, your kids go to school on school buses. You may sit on a school board. Uh, ask the question of your school board or someone you know within the school district, a decision maker, why have we considered looking at propane for our school bus fleet? We've got a, a host of testimonials of school districts that have made the transition 
that those folks can talk to about why it makes sense. So this is a, a huge opportunity for us as an industry to, to own this. Um, if you think back to the late 70s and 80s, most of the school buses were gasoline and that transition to diesel. We really believe uh, that, that over the next five to seven to ten years as the school bus uh, fleet is replaced, that we have an opportunity to, to see that wholesale change go from diesel to propane um, in, the next, in the next seven to ten years. So, again, keep your eyes and ears open for that. Next slide, please. This is just a little bit more detail. We offer a couple different tank solutions, one that uh, is 67 usable gallons. And if you go to the next slide, we also offer a 93 usable gallon tank with Bluebird. So we, we initially heard we love the 67 usable gallon tank, but some of our special activity buses um, need to go further. We'd like to run those buses because they consume more fuel and drive more miles. And we and Bluebird delivered with, a, with an extended range tank offering 93 usable gallons. Next slide, please. So we have some questions coming in um, sure. for the products you're talking about. Um, all these, are they dedicated um, fuel products, or are there any biofuel options? Yeah, good question, Brian. Everything we do at Roush is dedicated, um, so we're taking off the base gasoline fuel system and replacing with purpose-built components for, for propane. Um, we do get the question, why not biofuel? Um, uh, our founder, Jack Roush, um, when we sat down and talked about strategy for growth, uh, his comment was, look, let's develop a product that is robust enough from a technology standpoint and develop the service network to support it and give customers enough range so that they can run the cleaner, lower cost domestic fuel 100% of the time versus switching back and forth. So again, there's, there's a lot of success on the biofuel side in our industry and I get it, but, but our belief is if we're gonna change habit, we're gonna force it by going to dedicated and make the technology robust enough and the field service support good enough that uh, that transition is seamless. So everything we do today is dedicated. I don't see that change in, in, in the next couple of years, Brian. Okay. The next slide, this again, a little bit more detail. The, the Type C school bus I just talked about was really the, 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 big, the big lion, the, the big volume in the school bus industry. You know, typically 22 to 25,000 units were placed per year. Type A is much smaller from, a, from a, not only a size standpoint, but a, a total volume per year. But again, it's nice to have the complementary product, the Type A school bus that's based on the E450 chassis that I talked about earlier, so 41 usable gallons. We're seeing folks in school districts that put in the infrastructure for their Type Cs also transition uh, to propane for their Type As as well. Next slide, please. So I, earlier on I mentioned when we talked about um, foundation and one of the weak points uh, uh, of the alternative fuels industry in general was service and support. So if you go to the next slide, please. This is just a little uh, high-level uh, update on our service network. Uh, national footprint, now we're actually over 400 locations, both the United States and Canada. Uh, our training program uh, covers system overview, diagnostics, repair, warranty claim process, service manual review, and contact information. And then one of the things we developed in, in partnership with PERC the last couple of years was a web-based component. And I think our, our approach is, is unique for the alternative fuels industry. Uh, the web-based approach is that it allows the end user, the technicians, and the service managers to get comfortable with propane before the product arrives. So our sales team and field service team work with the, uh, the customer to go through the web-based training, the one-on-ones of propane, propane safety, how to file a claim with Roush, who to call, how do I diagnose, things like that that, again, just get the end users comfortable with the product. And then once uh, our vehicles are delivered, we actually send our team on site to do on site training with those technicians as well. So we do it with a web based component to kind of break down the barriers of, of resistance to change. And then once the product's on the ground, uh, we do on site training as well. And, and we found that to be very successful and very well received from the, uh, the technician community. Next slide, please. Just a little bit more detail about our field service uh, training support. Uh, services. We've got product training, as I mentioned, installation support. So we've got a, uh, a host of installers out there that are Roush and Ford approved to install our product uh, that our, our team manages on, on a daily basis. Our technical hotline, the field service engineers, warranty support, and then important, the field data analysis. So uh, just like anything, if it's mechanical, we're going to have problems, things are going to break. So but it's, it's taking that data, it's analyzing it, and then putting that information into future generations of product 
to either change design or work with a supplier from a quality perspective or a combination of both. Um, so it, it's that consistent feedback from the market in regards to what issues we're seeing to make the current generation product better as well as incorporate that into future designs. Next slide, please. Todd, one question that just came in yeah. was, you know, how can you find, you know, the easiest way to find the, the uh, location of these service centers? Yeah, if you go to RoushCleanTech.com, from a service perspective, you can then click on uh, service locations, and then you can find where the current uh, service centers are located. I, I would caution you again, um, don't feel limited to what you see there. If you need other support or other locations, uh, feel free just to ask us, and then we'll get our field service team engaged to get those folks to go through our web-based training, and then we'll do on-site training as well. So. Uh, we're going to see that continue to grow. Ford, uh, there's a significant push on Ford's side to how to better support propane and CNG through their dealer network. So I, I think that level of support and the professionalism will only continue to increase in, in the coming months. Okay. The, the next slide, just a little bit more detail. I touched on our web-based training. We've actually got two different uh, courses. It's the service technician course that I mentioned, and we also have the service manager, the service, service advisor course. So um, again, we, we want to make sure we cover all the bases prior to vehicles being delivered. This also allows us to track what technicians have uh, been through our training. So as an example, if a customer has a unit deployed, they go into Todd Mile Ford to have it serviced, and Todd Mile is trying to work on that vehicle, uh, we can see if Todd Mile has been trained properly to diagnose and repair that vehicle. So the, the obviously using the web-based software and the technology has made us much more sophisticated and ultimately drives and reduces that, that downtime that everybody's uh, looking to reduce in, in their ROI metrics. Next slide, please. I know I'm somewhat preaching to the choir here, uh, but I wanted to show this ROI calculator. Um, this is uh, comparing diesel to propane. Um, obviously, you guys know what you're paying for, for propane. Um, there's going to be a degradation from propane to diesel just based on energy content. But whether you're inside the industry, which the folks on the phone are, and, or you're outside the industry, the economics of the solution uh, make a lot of sense. Diesel to propane or gasoline to propane. In this slide, I, I show diesel, but don't account for DEF. It's, it's interesting. Um, we're working with Staples right now on a transition from diesel to propane, and he's telling us, well, you guys aren't, aren't actually aren't accounting enough for the cost of diesel. In, in his duty cycle, he accounts for about 25 cents per gallon from a DEF perspective. So he's paying about four for diesel, but his fully blended rate for diesel with DEF included is about 425. So again, uh, taking into account all the different cost factors to determining ROI is, is important. And we're getting educated every day by the industry as well as folks outside the industry. So if you go to the next slide, Diane. This just takes a, uh, a snapshot of, of that comparison, but I include DEF in, in this analysis again. Um, the ROI on the transition from gas, diesel to propane for the industry is significant, really significant, and even for the folks like UPS, FedEx, Frito-Lay, DISH, DirecTV, the, the math significantly works in their favor. Um, we talk about sustainability. I, I think it starts with economic sustainability and then uh, what, what the environmental benefit kind of comes after that. So uh, again, the math model works significantly in our collective favors on, on, on the webinar here. Next slide, please. And this is just that emissions calculator that, that I mentioned. We talk about sustainability, economic. This is the environmental piece, uh, you know, 220,000 mile life cycle, comparing the, the amount of CO2 reduced by moving to propane. So again, a little bit preaching to the choir about how clean propane is, but this is a message that we need to push and promote because our friends in the natural gas side are definitely doing it. So that truck running that type of duty cycle, that, that's a significant improvement in air quality that, that we need to uh, beat our chests about. Next slide, please. Todd, you mentioned natural gas um, question that just came in. Why is propane so much better better than CNG fuel for vehicles? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if it's better than. I think um, we're engineers, and I think that um, if we as an industry are smart, I think each kind of has their own niche. Um, we at Roush kind of believe light, medium duty. When I say medium duty, up to say 33,000 GVW is is a sweet spot for propane because of uh, tank capacity and portability and infrastructure, 
once you get up into class eight, you know, it, and they're running that many miles, it's it's uh, maybe a, a sweeter spot for CNG and LNG. So um, I think as an industry, if, if we ride the coattails of the natural gas folks who are pushing and promoting their benefits, instead of fighting them, I think it'll help us all. Um, again, I, I think that each has their spot, and if we focus on where our sweet spot is, there are you know, hundreds of millions of, of new gallons that are available for us as an industry. Good question, though, Brian. Another one, just to follow that, any plans for Class A trucks over the road? Uh, we don't today. I mean, I know obviously there's a variety of folks, and PERC funded a deal down with Mississippi State and PACAR. Um, today, you know, obviously we're in partnership with Ford, and Ford uh, only offers up to a Class 7 starting next year. So, you know, we're continually looking at uh, the trends and where things are going, and does it make sense for us to figure out maybe is there another partner in Class 8 to get involved in. But today, no plans to, for us to go to Class 8 with, with propane. Um, again, the, the C&G guys are pretty well entrenched there um, and, and maybe a tough one to overcome just based on uh, how, much, uh, how much momentum they have in the marketplace with, with Class 8 and infrastructure and clean energy. Not that we shouldn't look at it, but uh, again, I think there's hundreds of millions of gallons in Class 7 and down that we should be chasing that the natural gas guys really don't care about. That uh, that we can that we can gather. So, okay. Uh, the the slide that you're looking at today, um, again, I talked about the support. Um, Roush today has a, a, a significant size sales team. When I started in 2009, it was me, myself, and I. Um, and again, the co the commitment of the organization to not only grow on the engineering side and spend the dollars on engineering and technology and supply chain also has, has carried over to the sales side. So you're going to see uh, in, the, in the next couple slides that uh, we've got uh, 15 sales folks that are out there uh, beating the bushes, helping push and promote uh, why propane auto gas makes sense. So for this slide that you're looking at today, it shows um, the private industry and it shows the, the areas that they're focused on. So as an example, Eric Bates um, is focused on airport baking and food. Uh, because, again, we know those are sweet spots based on their duty cycle, and we have product that fits their needs. So as you guys are getting interested in getting involved in propane auto gas and you have an airport operator or you have a baking company, as an example, you'd call Eric, and Eric would work with you to go in and educate that customer why that makes sense. They would buy the vehicles, and then ideally you guys would get the gallons from that. So. Um, Steve Ford uh, calls on the propane industry and the energy industry. Um, you've probably met him in a couple of the shows. Joe Rudolph, uh, actually, it was a coup for us. He used to run the fleet for Indiana Department of Transportation and now manages our beverage, telecom, uh, and transit verticals. Uh, Randy Veenhoven is a gentleman I mentioned that has uh, 20 years' experience, knows the transit industry and funding and all the players inside and out. So I would definitely leverage his relationships and knowledge to help you guys sell gallons. And then Steve Whaley focused on landscape linen and logistics. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've got our, our school bus team, government school bus team, divided up uh, geography-wise um, instead of vertical-wise uh, based on how to support the Bluebird dealers and then just where the, the key markets are from a, a local state perspective uh, in regards to selling vehicles. So um, you'll see that the, uh, the names of the folks and the territories divided on this slide. And if you go to the next slide, please, Diane. This gives you the uh, the names of uh, the, the names attached to the the pictures of the folks. So you kind of get a feel for who they are. Um, again, we've got six folks out there every day that are focused on selling propane auto gas to school districts and government agencies. Um, Chelsea, Carrie, Jess Henderson, Philip Maley, Kelly, and Derek Whaley. Um, all are awesome to work with. All are very knowledgeable about funding, knowledgeable about the purchase process, and uh, can get you guys engaged and involved in, in selling auto gas to that to that segment. Next slide, please. I just wanted to, to, to kind of finish the next the last couple slides and, and remind everybody that, that again we appreciate the support of the industry that's allowed us to to build this foundation that I, I show here the brand the product the human capital which we just talked about the certifications the engineering the supply chain the field service uh, we really believe not only from Roush's perspective but the industry perspective we we have a gold mine here that we really need to push and promote together. Um, and it starts with the folks on this phone um, by adopting the product for your own fleet and then working with our team to go out and tell uh, that message to, uh, to fleets that are outside of our industry. Next slide, please. 
this is um, contact information for Brian and I. Um, if you need to get in touch with us, obviously you're going to have access to this presentation starting tomorrow. So reaching out to me or anybody on the sales team to, to ask questions or to get more engaged in an opportunity, please feel free to do so. Um, I would like to mention, um, and I know I'll, I'll turn it to Brian here in a second, we're going to be uh, hosting a propane bobtail spec review here at Roush on September 30th. Um, everybody that's registered here will get a follow-up note with the details on it tomorrow or later this afternoon. But it's uh, uh, 9.30, September 30th, uh, starts in the morning. And we're going to go through uh, a welcome uh, from our CEO, Evan Lyle. Uh, Tucker Perkins from Perk will be here talking about the importance of bobtails for the industry and why they've funded folks like Roush to develop the product. I'm going to go into technical detail of our product, and then the, the advantage we have, obviously, in our relationship with Ford, we're going to have the Ford folks here talking tech about their chassis. So any question related to transmission or to engine or to brakes, uh, they'll be here to go into, into grave detail about how, how this chassis will work for, for your application. So again, welcome anybody to attend that event. Um, it'll be about three hours the morning of, of September 30th and we think it will be very valuable, and then we're going to close it with a vehicle walk around. We're actually going to have a, a sample bobtail here uh, being built by Signature Truck in Clio, and then we're going to do a tour of our manufacturing operation. So, again, we'd love to have everybody on the phone come attend that event. We think it would be very worthwhile for you. Uh, we mentioned events, and, Brian, I, I'll segue it to you. I know you've got a few comments about a propane growth summit that you guys are, are working on for next year, so I'll transition to you to give the audience a little update on that. We do, Todd. And actually, uh, do you have time for a couple quick questions then, Todd? A lot, oh, a lot that, of yeah, please. In. The, the um, more the merrier. For those yeah. first. Okay. Okay. Um, what is the typical price of auto gas per gallon is one, one of the questions here. Yeah, good, good question. It's something as an industry we're working on. I mean, uh, today in Michigan, we've got our own fueling site, and we pay $1.63 a gallon for propane, and that includes uh, state and, fe and uh, federal taxes. Um, uh, so ultimately, work with your propane marketer, and we can connect you to Roush to the folks that are, are most in the know in your market related to, to auto gas, putting in the right infrastructure and, and, and getting you the price that's competitive. Um, it, sometimes uh, I think people go to the Department of Energy price report and see a much higher price. That, that's more retail propane if you were to go to buy propane for your, your barbecue cylinder or other traditional applications. But today you could, you could pretty safely say that $2 or under would be your propane auto gas price in volume. Uh, so very competitive compared to gasoline and diesel. And you had mentioned the savings calculator. Um, one question was, is, the, is that calculator online? It's online on our website, and you also can, we've, we've developed an iPad app that you can download from iTunes, and so you can download it yourself and put your own variables in and, and calculate uh, your own savings. And then a couple product-related questions um, from earlier. One was, why not an F-150 on propane? Yeah, good question. We, we actually, when I started, we, we had an F-150. That was our first product. Um, Recently, Ford did offer a gas prep engine that was a 3.7 liter in the F-150 um, in 2014 model year. That's now gone away, and for 2015, they don't offer a gaseous prep package engine for the F-150. Um, uh, Ford's talking about bringing that back for a future generation, but, but no commitment yet. Obviously, if we're going to do a product, it has to have gas prep because we want Ford's endorsement and Ford's OEM warranty behind the product. Uh, I think the other thing is our focus is – and should be as an industry on the products that burn more fuel. So as Ford and the other OEMs uh, develop more fuel-efficient solutions, uh, products like the F-150 don't burn as much fuel as they used to. So the ROI for our customers is not as good as it used to be, hence why our focus is more on Class 2 through 7 and school bus. But, but, but good question. We're keeping an eye on the landscape in regards to does it make sense to do an F-150. We've had a lot of customers ask, ask about it, but the starting gate really has to be a gas prep package from Ford and then enough demand from the industry to justify you know, a multi-million dollar investment on our side to bring that product to market. Great. Another question um, centers on the saddle tank. Um, just in terms of uh, progress made with safety there um, on the driver's side, you know, in a vehicle crash, can you talk about those those safety issues? Yeah, good, good question. Everything that we do from a from a tank mounting perspective is in compliance with NHTSA, FMVSS, EPA, CARB, Ford's guidelines. Um, all the crash modeling is done. 
Um, so from a safety perspective, I mean, obviously on a F650, 750 Ford mounts, uh, gasoline and diesel tanks outside frame rail. Um, so again, we've gone through all the different, uh, all the different trials and tribulations to ensure the product's safe. And we're not going to put uh, the greater Roush at risk by putting a tank in a location that would put a, a customer or a passenger at risk. So, again, we meet all requirements for, for where our tanks are mounted. And can your Roush kits be retrofitted on 2012 vehicles? Uh, it just depends on the uh, what model year or what the what what platform it is. So, uh, whether we have EPA or CARB certification, as well as um, the, the, where the end user is located. As an example, today in California, cal CARB rules don't allow you to retrofit uh, in general. We, we've actually gotten a couple of applications approved to be able to retrofit, but it just depends on the state and the product the customer is talking about. Uh, E450, F250, 350, F450, 550, the answer is yes, we absolutely can. I, again, I would caution if the vehicle should have the gas prep package on it, because we know if it doesn't, the, the lower lubricity over time may have a durability impact on the engine. But with the gas prep package on there from Ford, the engine should last just as long, if not longer, than a gasoline engine. Kind of a, a big picture question here, but why is the USA so behind the world in auto gas usage? You know, I, it's a great question. It's something we struggle with all the time, Brian. I, I think that we, we've been, I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky in, the, in regards to the cheap oil, and cheap gasoline, cheap diesel compared to the rest of the world. Um, you know, you go to Europe, you go to, to other folk, other areas around the, the world, the, the, the price of fuel is, is outrageous compared to what we pay here. A lot of it's done, you know, government taxation to drive that change to a cleaner alternative fuel. I, and I think, you know, obviously cheaper energy sources, one, um, I, I think then we talk about the technology, the robustness of the technology that we've addressed, the service network, the endorsement from the OEM that we now have. So I see that, that tide shifting, and I don't see it going back because, you know, the, the price of, of, of oil, the demand for oil, you know, supply and demand, you know, the traditional fuels will just continue to rise, and we've got a ton of supply of, of propane in this country with stable prices for the long term. So I, I think that tide's going to shift, and we're going to see mass adoption over the next decade um, of, of our product and propane in general. And that's really what we've scaled to support. I mean, we today are set up to do 6,000 units a year, but can quickly double that um, from, from a capacity standpoint. So we, we see in the next you know, 24 to 36 months producing 15 to 20 to 25,000 units a year. So we, we see that, that growth curve coming our way. A lot of good questions, and we uh, appreciate everybody's time. And thank you, Todd, for being here. And uh, just did we wanted to end on the uh, the Propane Growth Summit that we talked about. Um, one question from the LP Gas staff to those with us today on this call or listening to an archived version: We'd like to know if you would have an interest in attending a Propane Growth Summit that we would host next year in Florida. As our industry continues to evolve and traditional markets change, we would strive to bring marketers and industry supplier partners together for personal meetings. This would grow awareness of specific industry market segments and help both sides capitalize on new opportunities, especially outside the regular home heating season. If you have an interest or want to learn more about this event, please contact me or my colleague, LP Gas Publisher Brian Canaba, who many of you know. And you can find our contact information on the console here. And uh, we thank you all again. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for attending the Powered by Propane webinar. A recording of this webinar will be posted on the lpgasmagazine.com website and will be emailed to you one day from today. Please visit the LP Gas website for information about future events like this one. Thank you for attending and have a nice afternoon.